Noting that DC traces its 4th of July traditions way back to when the city was brand new and just getting started. Here's Mike Valerio to take us back in time. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. There's nothing more DC than Mrs. Abigail Adams reciting the Declaration of Independence with a nice huzzah thrown in there for good measure. Huzzah! After all, DC is the permanent home of the Declaration of Independence here at the National Archives, but today's reenactment is relatively new. There weren't that many parties here until 1801. That's when Thomas Jefferson hosted the first 4th of July celebration at the White House. Doors were open for people to simply walk in and have refreshments. And when the city barely survived the War of 1812, popularity picked up across the country for 4th of July gatherings. Things were in full swing for the country's 50th birthday here in D.C., but Jefferson was gravely ill and too weak to make it to Washington. That's the last time we ever heard from him, when he wrote a 4th of July letter saying that the holiday should be here to stay, to refresh our recollections of our American rights, and to show an undiminished devotion to our newfound freedoms. And also worth mentioning, back in Jefferson's day, heat was still a problem here. July 4th, 1817, it was so hot in this town, there was only one parade. It was at 4 a.m., and the history books have not written how many people were there, so we can ask Topper when he's back for his first-hand account. Well, or, or Melissa, <laughs> too, there. but you know there was no air conditioning, so I well, guess we can say we it's a little bit better now. Right, Topper is ancient, so he was there. Melissa, <laughs> I don't think, was there. We were not there, Melissa, we know, we know. So, last Topper is back. All right, thanks, Mikey. You bet, you bet.